you can go through the proposals i will share the link and also uh, later we will record it and then share those recording as well i uh, will just wait for five five more minutes okay Till that time, probably I can uh, set the context. I mean, uh, we started this uh, session not just now. Actually, Garo from Chennai, uh, he was doing the meetup for a while, and then uh, I think it dropped because of some reasons. And then we kick started again. Uh, some bunch of those uh, volunteers we were interested, and then we just thought uh, we would have this meetup, uh, you know, not location specific or. Uh, Not having a time constraint, all those factors which comes in when you want to travel to a meetup, and also we want to include folks uh, in regions who don't have the meetups running right now. Like Bangalore, Pune, Hyderabad has more community, but rather uh, in uh, people who from other regions could also benefit from this. So that was also other motive, and we we actually uh, have a uh, another meetup which is actually Go Study Group, which is run by Aro. Uh, probably can say uh, the credit goes uh, to him as well because it's it's almost similar. Uh, we are trying to replicate here. Um, all the information is available in Git, and also we'll keep posting it in uh, meetups. Uh, but yeah, if, if there is anything else, we can we can talk at the end of the session, and then we could catch up also. So, um, how many of you have actually attended uh, physical meetups, um, co meetups? So, I um, I have been organizing the Chennai co meetup. Um, oh, okay. Uh, are you asking me, Sarah? Uh, Sorry, I'm asking everyone, everyone who is participating. I think it's going to be difficult to coordinate, but yeah, sure. Uh, probably you guys can introduce. Uh, Anand, you can introduce. Ankur, you can introduce. And then, like, folks who done something or uh, have some question, they can take a shot one by one. Uh, if there is a clash, just please coordinate. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, uh, hi everyone. my i am ankur so this is ever attending or virtually or offline session basically i attended what uh, just uh, informed that uh, from the aran session so recently i started golan learning means it's been uh, it's been 20 to 25 days i have started learning golan as a new language <laughs> i had i have experience with uh, i mean basic experience with node js it's building application with node js so for a static language experience with uh, java and all but uh, this is the first static language where uh, sorry did equating right now also A bit. It was better in the middle of it. Hello. So, are you guys able to hear me? Yes, I'm much better now. Ah, uh, I guess airtel in Bangalore is really bad. I don't know. 
uh, is there a way that you could connect to different internet or uh, diff- with different thing? Because it's going to be really difficult uh, conversing, uh, trying to press it also the video also. So could you try again? Uh-huh. So that's it. Right now I'm uh, where uh, I have close to three point five year of experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have one. If I would take on number two, I'm not up. Hey guys, sorry, I think uh, uh, Ankur is facing some problems. Uh, but before that, for the rest of the folks who join, uh, I think we can start it. Uh, we can start the session. We've been waiting for a while and then folks to join. I think folks will join in the meantime. So, hi, I'm Dinesh and uh, we are a bunch of organizers. Uh, we wanted to start this remote session. Um, the reasons are multifolded. Uh, one is like there are folks in other region also who don't have a meetup coming. Like we have like Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad has a better community. Uh, this is also to reach out to more people. And also, you know, this is not region specific and then time is not a constraint and then um, we want to keep it a little informal and then you can share your projects or ideas or uh, just get to know more people and then networking, everything we could do here, uh, just like a meetup, but not specifically, but rather um, suggestions, feedbacks are always welcome. And yeah, so, so that's the base. Uh, and so generally we will have like a, an hour or so, uh, and then with one or two talks, uh, followed by question and answers. And then finally at the end, we could have uh, informal discussions also. So uh, thanks everyone for joining again. And today we can start with uh, two talks. Uh, so the first talk is gonna be a uh, goal data. Uh, it's actually text editor uh, written in Golan and the talk is going to be given by Ankur uh, It's around 20 minutes and then if you have any questions and answers, uh, uh, you can ask at the end of the talk. And then please be on mute. Uh, if there is any questions, you can shoot in the chat. I have posted a few links also. So yeah, uh, Ankur, you can take over. I hope the internet is better now. Angur, we can see you on mute. Angur, you are on mute. Um, I think you can talk or uh, we'll go to the second talk first and then we'll revisit once we are settled up. Um, Dinesh, would you mind going first? Uh, sure. Um, so I can share uh, the talk. Uh, I can go first, and then please let me know if you face any, uh, you know, lags, so that I could stop and then let's speak later. And the whole thing is going to be a code. Uh, I will share my screen, and uh, if you have any questions, shoot in the chat also. Uh, just, just. You keep me in loop because I wouldn't know uh, if, I'm, uh, if my connection is lost. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, just just a second. Let me share my screen. Okay, cool. Uh, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay. Cool. So I hope it's visible. Uh, okay. 
So the agenda which I had for this talk is actually uh, just majorly two things. Uh, just a second, yeah. Uh, one is flats. Uh, we will check uh, what the Golan package uh, provides us with the flats, and also we will check uh, what a command package is. Uh, I hope you guys would have seen it. At, even if not, like I'll set the context because I'm not sure about the community. There will be uh, newcomers as well. So. We will explore these two things and then we will explore a library uh, which is actually using it and then we'll also look at some open source libraries which is doing it better, uh, which has a better control on it. So yeah, uh, cool. So let's start with a very uh, simple setting context. So here we have a basic simple file and then what I have here is a uh, a simple program which can actually uh, read your flags from the uh, std uh, any uh, when you are actually invoking the program you can pass arguments i think you would have seen it before it is very similar uh, but it, it just has a very nice features of parsing so uh, before explaining it probably i'll run it so that uh, we know it go on go so yeah, so I think anytime in any applications, when you run it, we always know that uh, the zero argument is the file which you're running. And then let's say you're passing some argument, which is blah, one, two, three. These are all argument which is being passed to the program. In shell, you would be accessing something like this. Uh, in other languages, you have different uh, APIs or different uh, functions to access it. So in Golang, we have something similar, uh, it's called OS args. And then what you've seen, the line one is actually uh, the argument which is being passed to the program. So here, whatever you see here is the arguments. But like, what is the main point of the flags is, imagine you're writing a client set application, uh, you would have seen ls, ls and l, or uh, ls and one. Uh, all this thing is actually very similar uh, when you run a uh, command line application. And this could have been built in either C, Python, or any language. It doesn't matter. But what is common here is ls is the command you're running, and then I can run the argument. Or you're going to say qa.wiki, these are all arguments. Imagine writing all of this yourself by parsing this particular one line. It's going to be conversion, right? So you have all the arguments in a list, which is available to you. This is actually slicing with respect to Golan. Imagine you parsing each and everything. It's going to be really difficult because what you are focusing on is writing business application and not really a parsing library. So, so OS args, uh, this is what it gives you all the arguments, including the first one. But now we can look at the flag uh, package which is provided by the Golan. So what I've done here is uh, I have created a flag dot in, and then if we look at the function signature, it takes three arguments. First is the name, which is actually what is the name of the flag that you are passing. So it's like uh, ls some directory. Uh, if you say there is equal to one two three, uh, that is the name, like the name of the particular flag you are passing, and the value is actually uh, a default value. And uh, usage is actually a description so that it has a nice output of uh, like what, is, what this flag is meant to do. Um, so similar to integer, we have uh, different um, functions for other data types. So like flag.string, and then uh, we have flag.bool. So all of this is uh, defined for each and every uh, you know, uh, primitive data types. Uh, so given that, uh, if you notice, this function also returns a, a pointer to the variable that you want. So in case of integer, it's going to be a pointer to n. And in case of a string, it's going to be a pointer to string. Uh, we, will no, we will notice the reason why. Uh, so let me just run, go run main.2 with I can name uh, something. So just to set the context again, so I ran the application with go run main.go. Uh, we can build a program and then run it, which is similar. So I can go, go build. Uh, sorry, I have multiple applications. It is simple main go. 
So because of it, I have to do it this way for now. And I'm passing a flag which is called main, and then I, I can pass it to uh, any value basically. So in this case, limit is the name, and uh, default value is 10. And then I have uh, some description. And then I'm creating another string var. What, what this basically does is very similar. But what you notice is here, it was returning you the pointer to the variable, whatever type you want. But rather here, you are uh, giving your variable reference as a uh, input to the string var. So let's go into the uh, def uh, definition. So what you can see here is, is a pointer, uh, string var. So if it is a bit string, uh, if it is int var, it would be a string. And similarly, name of the particular flag and the, what is the default value and what is the usage. Cool. So now we have two ways of defining a function. Uh, if you ask intuitively, hey, why should I have two different things? Uh, probably one thing you could think of is uh, we might have seen a lot of cases where uh, you have a particular name, but also you have a short name for the same flag. So like. Uh, directory is equal to something also you can do something like i can be is equal to uh, something so if you if you want to write something of this sort uh, it's going to be again difficult handling two different variables for the same purpose so if you ask in that perspective you can actually use the same name so in this case i have a name flag uh, which is pointing to the same uh, variable but what you can do is you can give her two different names. One is the, uh, you know, very descriptive uh, flag name, and the other one is actually short case. So these are all definitions. Basically, what is your program expecting the uh, from the input? So these are all the flags you would expect or accept, and then based on that you do some operations. And then this is what uh, does all the magic for you. So in this case, till this point, so if I say uh, from dot and the length uh, before passing and then I can print the value limit and I can also print the value name and then let's try to run it and see so in this case uh -huh, okay so this was a pointer so I had to reference it so if you notice before passing it's actually uh, 10 the default value of the integer and I since I gave uh, name is equal to Kuba, uh, value, uh, the value was actually overwritten in the second place. So probably I can also add limit, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So if you notice here, before passing, we had two variables, which is actually uh, defaulting to it. But after passing, what you have is uh, the value which you have given in the command. And I could also say the icon name is, this is cool. And then this is actually overwritten. Cool. So this is the base, but if you think of what is happening inside parts, like we don't need to go uh, deeper, uh, very much deeper, but rather if you notice, it's actually using the OS arts except the first one. So this is actually uh, slicing it. You take an array and then everything except the zeroth element is being passed to the parts. And then finally you have all your variables, value stored in uh, wherever you declare. Cool. So, so this is at a very high level. Uh, I I can go into parts and then show you one thing because this was very interesting. So basically, flag set is what is uh, doing all the job. So this is a struct uh, in other languages who are coming to. It's almost like a class. And this guy had a function which is actually a parts. Uh, this is on a flag set. So what it means is. This flag set we created at the beginning and then we define all the flags which you want to perform. So which you can almost imagine like, uh, okay, I want name, I want limit, and then I pass it and then I should have all the values. So let's see how this is doing, right? So what we saw was command line. And then command line, if you notice, it's almost like a singleton variable. So when you initialize your program, the command line is going to be a, a single variable. It doesn't have a different instance for every call. So this creates a new flag set. So which means for all the arguments it created, and the moment you call parse, uh, it returns you all the values. I mean, uh, it doesn't return it, but rather writes it to appropriate variables. So, and then flag set is the one which holds all the list of flags. Um, so formal here you can see this is the map of string. 
this is the one which is going to hold mean and limit in our case. And then when we call parse, it internally uh, deals with each and every argument, OS dot uh, args, and then it populates, hey, is the name available in formal? Then I can actually put it in uh, actual. So it's going to be something like name is equal to bar. And then if, if you give some other argument, which is x is equal to one, two, three, it's not going to put it. It's just going to ignore it because you don't need it in the path. So this, this is the high level and also one level internal, uh, but you can definitely go ahead and look at it by yourself. So let's just run this and let's see uh, what happens when I pass something random, right? So I can random. Then this gives a very nice output. Like, what is the point of declare, declaring everything up front, right? So basically, you can see, hey, uh, this application takes a limit, and then the default is 10, and then it takes the icon and string, and then icon name string. So this is really cool, and then you can do nice operations with it uh, when you are building client applications. Because the moment you want to run a HTTP server, you might want to take a port, you might want to take a a uh, log file, you might want to take uh, where is the service running, all, all those parameters you would take it as a flux. But just to uh, give context uh, on other library which is doing very nicely, there is something called a uh, library uh, which is written by Ope, uh, it's called CLI. What this gives is very similar, like it uses flux very extensively, but at the end of the day, uh, what you will have is something of this sort which is really nicely printed, but also you can give command and then subcommands to it. So it's like I pass in a command saying server, and then I can say within that port, what is the port, and then within that, what is the log location. And then I can say configuration as a major command, and then I can pass subcommands to it. So, yeah. Sorry, I think somebody had a question. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. So yeah, it overrates it. Actually, we can uh, try to run it. Gaurav had a question. If you pass multiple values to the same uh, flag, what happens? We actually saw with uh, shorthand and then uh, the white name, uh, it actually overridden it. But let's just run it again. So I'm passing name two, and then I'm passing name x. And then what I have is x, x, x. And then we can try it again. Uh, this is final. So because if you think of it, or even if you want to go inside, I can go into parts and then I can say parts one. So what this does is it internally goes and reads one by one. So if you notice the flags are prefixed with hyphens, or you can also prefix, I mean, you can give spaces in between or you can give equals. But if you imagine it is ideally going into one by one argument and then it overrides the flags. So let me just show you the last one uh, where it is doing that. So yeah. So f dot actual of name, it's storing the flag. And if you see name, the name is actually uh, what it's taking from the slides. So yeah, so it actually overrides. It passes one by one, so it is actually overrides. Cool. So if there's any more questions you can send, if not, I could go on with command and then I can uh, wait for the questions at the end. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Cool. Uh, so I hope this set the basic context and then hope you could relate to it. Uh, I thought we'll come back to it later. Um, so yeah. So the next part is, I mean, the major focus I was looking at here is you want to write an application which is doing some wrap things for you. I don't know whether we use uh, Kubernetes, in that case, writing a big command is complicated. So people write some nice command line utilities to short another, um, which is kubek, or if you use Terraform or anything, uh, gplot, it, it, the commands are really complicated because the number of arguments are large and the amount of things you have to type is uh, long. So people tend to write, uh, you know, helper sort of scripts in it and then it, it's actually running shell commands, but rather some wrappers and doing nice things. The one I have is also for a very similar need. I will share it later. But yeah, so so to that point, what we are saying is we are writing uh, not HTTP servers in this context, but rather a command line utilities. And 
you basically will eventually want to run a shell uh, command, right? So in that case, what Golan gives us is a package called OS Exec. Uh, it has a lot of features, but what we will focus on right now today is uh, it's called command. So it's actually called OS Exec command. What this gives you is it, it sounds similar. Obviously, it's going to create a command and then it will let you run it in the uh, you know, in the shell, and then it will give you the output. It's not exactly shell. It has a nice environment. It doesn't allow you to use all the environment variables and stuff like that. But on abstract level, let's say uh, this is to enable you to run a command in bin bash or z shell, whatever shell you are running, and then give you output. So, so exec package has a command. Uh, this is a function which is going to return you CMD. It's actually a pointer, so you can change the values later. And what it takes is a name and then arguments, very similar to what you run locally. So it's like, uh, so let me close this. So if I do ls I can l, uh, very similar context, ls is the name of the command. And then this is the star that go I can l all of them as actually arguments. So, so you get the point, right? Like whatever we saw similar to flags, now you are passing it into the argument. Uh, this lets you run it. Uh, so, so let's not go into the details of that. So in this case, tree is a command where it prints you a nice structure uh, rather than just say ls. And then forget about the execute context background. Uh, that will context is a very wide topic that we can touch up later. So what it does is it creates a command, and then I have a function called execute. Uh, the reason I created is you can notice it's execute command. This is the uh, struct you are dealing with and then you're able to run it. And what I'm doing majorly is, this is the major part, where you're calling command.run. And I am setting its std out to output, uh, which is actually a buffer where we collect the output of the command, and then I'm printing the output, and then I'm also printing the error. Uh, simple. Um, just to go into the details of command itself, like you can set path uh, where the path of the command is, and then you can set an arguments which will be setting next point, like whatever the argument you're passing to the uh, command. And then environment, as I said, like you cannot access all the stuff, but rather you will be passing A and B variables like here in key is equal to value format. And then let's just focus on this, right? HTDN is where like if you want to run something, let's say you run a command read, uh, it would let you uh, access uh, characters from the terminal, right? So for that, you can set an HTDN, it could be some Anything basically, since it's a reader, you can uh, set it as a file or set it as a HDN or anything which implements this uh, reader interface, right? So, this is HDN, and then what we are using is HD out to read the data, and then it has a lot of other stuff. But basically, what this is doing is it's creating another process, and then it's hiding all the details for you, uh, and then it is creating a process, running it, and then giving you the out. So, yeah, so this other process runs the command. Whatever arguments you are passing to it, you can push in uh, input with SVDN and also get the output with SVDN. So, very simple, straightforward. So, let's just uh, run, run this program. Uh, go run uh, what are, this command, my command.co. This gives me a structure like this. So, if you notice, the output is printed from the program and the error is printed from the program. So it gives me a nice structure of the current range which I have. So which is basically like ls, I have all the files. So I can actually say, hey, uh, print the, the parent directory structure, right? And then this gives me a nice output again. And I just, just to set this, I can actually say ls, so in this case, I'm very similar to ls and ls. Uh, let's run this again. And then if you notice, this is the output which is being generated from the uh, shell. Uh, I mean, the Golang program that we wrote. And then if you notice, all of them is, is, is very simple commands. It's just executing and then it's running. One catches here is whatever you're passing, it has to be a separate argument. These are all uh, the varags, varags of string which you're passing to the program. So yeah. So, Exit command, you create, you call it the name, and then you pass an argument, and then you can capture the output in particular uh, uh, buffer or any, anything else. 
so this is again very basic level um uh, if you have guys have any questions around the code uh, i can uh, share it uh, i can talk about it sorry this execute use context on cd in yours yeah so the context is not used um the context we generally pass it as a nice i mean we should pass it as a convention because the context as we said uh, just to set the context for others uh, it has some uh, background or it has some timeout or it can pass in some variables which is specific to request in case of script servers uh, but majorly what people do is you can control the time of the execution um, and then close the program because you don't want your http to the request to run for 5 seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds but rather it should be within a second or milliseconds so even db applications or uh, db queries you don't want it to take it forever but rather you should have sensible timeouts and every layer deep queries external service calls for that you will create context and pass it around uh, let's just say on a high level context is something which has the context of the request or the call and also it can have time limits yes currently we are not using it but what we can do is let's create some command which is something like grep uh, i when i and then i can r and then i can say some directory so basically what i'm writing here is grep i can ir main and then dot so it's a grep all the command right so but imagine if i'm doing this in home it's going to take so much time you don't want it to run it forever so in that case you would ideally want to limit it so what we can do is instead of calling execute command there is another thing called command context what this takes is very similar uh, a context and then name and args so as i said like you can create a context uh, and then pass it to it and then it can control the uh, time limit so let's see how we can pass the context to it uh, so non touch so let's just say ctx here ctx equal to context dot background is something like anything any application which runs in background there is no limit but what we want is context dot uh, with time mode so this is again a function which is provided in the context package what you give is a parent context in this case that's going to be background and then time mode so how long you want uh, this particular function to run so let's just say uh, ctx uh, time dot millisecond let's say to 500 or 500 seconds so in this case i'm creating a context and then i'm expecting uh, it to run within 500 milliseconds so let's just put this here let's run the default uh, one first uh, context take the command context uh, i think i'm missing something context with time on context with time on it's hard yeah so it's actually passing me cancel function yeah the cancel function is something like uh, you call this so that all of the uh, resources are released or stopped properly something like that Let, let's not dive into that that's not our major focus here uh, but you always call it with defer uh, and then we pass in command context context yeah my, i did a spell mistake yeah cool so i'm passing a context to this particular command saying hey you have to run within 500 milliseconds uh let us run this hold on my command copy to works funny so now let's run the uh, grip command so in this case it will be a uh, quick uh, because we are running it in the current line uh, okay um in order to use i'm missing the context so yeah so yeah in this case uh, i think i missed some okay i shouldn't be passing this let me just verify i'm just trying to run the grep python ir i think i would have had it somewhere uh, let me check whether i have it in the registry so yeah uh, i'm just trying to see what is the argument how is it going to be uh, so let's just say 
sleep if not so let us say sleep for five let me sleep for a five uh, let me get it up uh, grip for now rather we can say sleep for five seconds then if i run this command it's going to ha okay sorry uh, it's actually getting killed because of the process uh, the context which you have given so let us go back uh, grab and then i are and then i also have to pass in the main uh, which i missed in the last case so let me just increase the timer and then okay i'm not saying i'm back cool so in this case if you notice uh, we have the grep program which it ran and then it gave us the output like wherever the main was available so now in this case it's error is null you could notice this but let's say i'm trying to run this in home directory and um, let me reduce the time to 5 uh, 100 milliseconds in this case the error is uh, exited so it's actually killing it so because of which we we are not able to see the output uh, what i can probably do is run it in the previous folder and then see how it behaves so if you notice uh, i increase the timeout and then it was able to run it and then give all the main uh, match uh, files actually so yeah so you can pass and create a context and then pass it to the command context the context is the first value and then the name of the command and then the rest the arguments uh, i hope that answers yeah cool uh, i hope that answered the question so given that uh, these two things these are the basic things uh, what i want to show you is a uh, library uh, uh do you guys have any questions about this uh, sorry probably in that case uh, it wouldn't make sense to show the library in that case if you have any questions please shoot uh, Okay, cool. Uh, I'm assuming there is no questions. So, uh, before showing the code again, uh, what I have here is uh, I have a tool which I have written. So basically, to give you access such access into a particular Google uh, Cloud Compute Machine. Uh, I don't know whether you have dealt with compute machines. Basically, you can create Google Cloud uh, VMs, and then that's where all of our applications runs. And then giving access such access is not easy because the UI is very weird so it's almost like i'm not showing the actual one because we have some sensitive information but it's almost like you have to go to a particular page and then you have to edit a particular tab and then you have to copy paste this id or a say a copy file and then it's going to be really cumbersome and imagine if you are a owner of your repository and then you need to give access to all of the members to particular machines which you need it's going to be really painful painful dealing with the ui so so i can show you uh, uh boxes so this i am actually connected to a google cloud project um here i have some boxes tell it me with the uh, uh, names and what i can try is let's see i am trying to access it into this i am permission denied okay so this is a problem uh, i hope you can see it and then what i can actually do is i have written a dcloud client and then what i'm doing here is hey say hey filter with the name delete me and i'm passing in user uh, flag which is actually dinesh kumar and then i'm limiting it to one so let's just run this so yeah so now what it's doing is uh, in google cloud uh, you can have tons of uh, vms but rather we need to filter it and then uh, we need to uh there there is some complications in ssh keys because there could already be like 10 people uh, ssh keys added into the vms so you shouldn't override it but rather the console google cloud console uh, let you override not add it so because which you need to download it and then i append your key and then put it again so some sort of complication is there so it's actually done all of the stuff now now if i try to ssh it i am actually able to ssh 
So, so now if you notice, this is actually a, a command line client and then it's taking a filter uh, flag and then this is the R and this is the another R. What I can actually do is uh, G cloud client sum. Okay, uh, it's gonna run some stuff. I, I haven't put it on help, but let me, yeah. So in this case, I did a help and then flags gives you by default, what is a help? So I've written some filters, instances, what are the box to uh, add your SSH key limit because you might have hundreds of messages you, I just want to add to, uh, add to five. It's not necessarily your keys, but it could also be some other keys and the username and zone, this is very specific to uh, Google Cloud. So this is the application uh, which, is, which is doing its job, uh, whatever I've done. So if you want to see the code, uh, it, it is exactly uh, based on whatever talk we talked till now. Cool. So um, if you have any questions on this, um, you can ask because I'm just going to show the code and then I'm done. Uh, from SSH. Huh. So, so basically this is to give access. It's, it's not necessarily everybody will have access. So because of it, I'm adding SSH key with the client. So that's why I'm, I'm doing it. Uh, so these are the flags, it is a key, we are getting it and then filter, I'm defining a string var and then limit is an integer var and then boolean var because uh, this is something else that I'm adding it to etc host. So we read all the variables and then something like, you will eventually do something like this. If SSH file is empty, then what you can actually do is take the home folder and then take the default ID RSA public uh, file. A public key. So, in, and then by default, it's assuming okay, you can add your RSSD. So, this is the use of flags. So, let's just quickly look at uh, the executor. So, in this case, I wrote a very similar function, function exactly the same. So, you can see a uh, pipe buffer, and then it's going to call exit command with the uh, command name and arguments. And then it, we are taking the output and then printing it. That is the output which you saw when. We run it, so it's actually executing command, executing command, all this. So the commands, there is a slight difference of written because I didn't really want to uh, give it as a uh, slice as a separate separate argument, but rather what I wanted was it's the command looks something like this, right? The decloud compute instances list or decloud compute instances described. Uh, what you can actually do is split it by yourself. So that's what I did, like. You call args and then strings.field splits uh, the string based on uh, default delimiter, which is spaces or tabs or new lines. And then you can, you basically appending into the basic command name and then you're returning it. So that is what it's happening here if you see an executor. So we call command name and then command.args and then I'm doing uh, dot 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 dot, which is actually expanding the slides to bar arcs, so which is almost equivalent like passing one two three uh so it's almost like this so slides of and you do this it's almost equivalent of doing one two three so this is what uh you know uh it's happening here uh, all the magic uh, you can look at the code uh, i can share the repo url um so the repo url uh, is in my github it's called the cloud client if there is any questions with respect to code with respect to flag and this uh, you can shoot. Uh, if not, I'll pass it on to uh, Anthony. Uh, do you guys have any questions? And I see Anthony left. Uh, he's supposed to um, give, share his talk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so if there is any questions or do you guys want to time uh, deeper till Ankur comes in, we can talk. Uh, once Ankur comes in, please let me know. So uh, what I all I can also show is uh, flags, uh, the documentation. So this is the flag documentation. Uh, you can just check uh, package flag. Uh, let me just share this. You can look at this 
and also look at this uh, particular piece. Very simple to packages, but we have very nice uh, ability. So whatever I've said, flag.in, flag.in bar, uh, you can go at it, uh, look at it. This is a simple thing. You can pass in a flag in multiple ways. You can just pass in flag, you know, just as a bool, whether to do an operation or not equals to key values or with space. You might have seen when you run any cell applications. Um, I don't know whether you guys have used uh, this particular piece of code, which is actually like, let's say ls one I can do fzf. fzf is a fuzzy search library, and then it does all this stuff for you, uh, selection and stuff. You can pretty much look at any uh, command line uh, tools which, which you're using. And definitely it's gonna be uh, using this flags and uh, commands. Uh, one more thing I can probably show is, okay, let's see. Okay, so I have some files, I have some changes, get the, let's say main.co. Uh, there is something called uh, uh, FPP. Like what I can do is DSP, FPP. And then what it's doing is all the changes, you can pipe it to the file path picker. It's actually called file path picker. And then I can run a command on it. So get diff. And then what it's doing is it's actually doing the same thing. Uh, so uh, I'm just using this tool. Like if others don't get it, like I don't really have to go click main.go or I can say diff main.go. The use cases are different. But in this case, instead of writing git diff main.go, what we did was we did DSC and then uh, I piped into FPT and then I can run a command. So let's say I can do a chart. So this guy is doing that operation. So if you think of it, this is exactly using the command package and then giving you the benefit. So you can look at that package as well. Uh, it's called uh, FPP. Uh, FPP. Uh, yeah, path picker. So this is a cool tool. Again, you can check. Sorry, I couldn't hear it. Uh, Sankur, uh, you can actually uh, go ahead and give your talk. Sorry, I think I might have taken more time, but yeah, uh, you can take more time and then finish your talk. And then if there is any questions, we can discuss later. Yeah, it's it's up to you. Uh, you can share your screen. Yeah, yeah. share. Sure. So you guys able to see my screen now? Yes. So basically uh, what I started with is the, this editor is like uh, uh, this is the first project that I am doing in the Golang and this is the first time I am uh, starting with the system level programming. So uh, this is this gave me an opportunity also to learn more about the system level stuff uh, from the uh, Golang perspective and also from the Linux perspective. Uh, so, okay, let me just show you what I have done till now. So yeah, so uh, so basically the, this is the editor version of it's now it's uh, what we see when we open Vim. So we have this blank screen, similar kind of things we get over here. And whatever you type, I haven't done implemented the functionality of save or uh, anything. Uh, so whatever we type, key stroke, it's uh, going to display. So if I type anything other than the key stroke, like any signal, control C or anything you can see it's just displaying the special character but it's not actually quitting the terminals so those are the things that have been implemented apart from this arrow key and all so these things have been and if i do control q it will quit the editor and similarly if i want to load any file right now i have hard coded the value to read from the file over here so this is reading from the text.txt so any argument basically we can pass the file name from there so it's basically reads the file content from there so i have to still uh, give the vertical horizontal is 
scaling and all those things those things has not been implemented and i am still researching what now how to do that so okay so this is the basic functionality let me just go through uh, walk you through the code that needs to so we all have uh, used uh, terminals right so whatever we type over here so this is the whatever we type here so this comes to uh, we get it gets displayed to us so this is right now terminal in the canonical mode what we uh, so whatever we type we can have it uh, over here so there are two modes of terminal one is uh, canonical mode Uh, I can't hear you as well. I'm sorry. Inkar, are you there? um um we pro probably we could continue anyone has any questions or uh, ankur is back okay. sorry guys it's really bad today i don't know what has happened with my both broadband and airtel Okay, fine. Uh, please continue. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, Dating. Uh, would you like to continue? Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, so um, basically this uh, Git history that uh, I have. Uh, basically, I'm clear that in uh, commit message. So, what I'm trying to do with my uh, editor? What is the purpose of that commit? And each commit will be very small. So, if uh, Okay. So here is the function that uh, enables the raw mode in my terminal. So basically, I have uh, put down the comment also because it's, it's the first time also for me. So I am putting it for myself also so that I can refer it later onwards. So what are the things that I am trying to disable and what are the API that I am using? So. So to you know, there is no uh, shortcut to enable raw mode. Uh, basically, it's like disabling all the flags that is uh, there to uh, prevent the canonical mode to work. So like uh, these flags in a output control and like uh, control S and control Q character. Also, this uh, flags uh, like uh, ICRNL. So these flags are uh, lined. Uh, we are. I'm trying to just end it with uh, after uh, 
not so it's basically and a not operator and trying to disable those flags so after these flags has been disabled uh, what we get is a terminal in the raw mode so this uh, uh, Mm. Yeah. Uh, you guys are able to see me see my screen um so uh, if we disable raw mode uh, i mean enable raw mode and let me just disable this raw mode and it does nothing for now So you can see if if I type something, I'm not able to see it because I typed a ls list of command and, uh, and the command was not displayed. So while closing this editor, be it in panic mode or anything, I have to re-enable the uh, what is the original state of the terminal. What was the or whatever be the original? So if you go down in the main function. So I'm enabling raw mode. If an uh, error is uh, not nil, anything happens. I'm trying to clear screen on exit, and that is where I'm trying to disable the again. Yeah. So basic uh, after that, uh, it's uh, in the raw mode. So in the raw mode, what happens? Instead of line by line character, this becomes uh, this becomes the every keystroke. So. in conin canonical mode we have to type each line and then the input is passed to the uh, whatever control function or uh, program that is running in the foreground but in raw mode each key stroke is passed to the uh, back foreground process so here this is what i'm i have started the termin editor in the forever loop where for each uh, action uh, whatever the uh, key press i am trying to do i am uh, reading the value and, uh, and doing the action based on the yeah so you can see if i am passing control c is basically a quit character uh, so i uh, if it's a quit i am returning one and nil and in case of arrow up arrow down arrow left and uh, that is the position cursor i am trying to move the cursor row and cursor positions uh, similar way for each act uh, go editor read key for each press key i am trying to read the char bytes and then trying to figure out so it's basically more of uh, uh, what are the key acts uh, key stroke that i have Uh, press so there are certain sequence that has to be followed uh, for uh, escape so control if we press control q we get this uh, byte value of 17 other in other case suppose we are pressing the up arrow key we have a three bytes uh, gets uh, comes to us first is the uh, uh, so followed by this skip sequence so if first key is uh, this and second key becomes our skip sequence then we are pretty sure we have to follow the uh, three we are trying to read three bytes so in that case we are so similar is the case i have tried to build it up and that's where i am right now so any suggestions or any improvement you can suggest over this i can try to implement it but uh, it will take time from my side because this is my first project so i'm not sure uh, how i'm going uh, doing i mean this is great um, honestly building a editor in go i never thought of that at all 
I, I I wasn't even sure if that was possible. And uh, so yeah, so once I started, I have to really thank Sprint because he helped me getting started with uh, means in the correct direction, and he also suggested that for different OS you can read from files. So right now that day I am not even concerned about this because going that way will I will be deviating from my path to get it finished for my operating system that is the Linux. So I am not aware of Windows and Mac OS, so I don't want to take go. Broad way. First, let me finish, make a working one, and then I can go along and go for another OS and get it work over there, and then have it in a proper way. Uh, hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that's really cool, and the best part to appreciate is uh, you just started recently in the first project, and then you wanted to showcase it. Because what I've seen is generally in meetups, people, even though they have experience of a year, they wouldn't show up. So this is really awesome, and then yeah, you should finish it up, and then we expect you again in a meetup, either in remote or in the actual location. So yeah, really thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, right now uh, I'm more concerned. So thanks for that context. Uh, you showed it with the uh, command line also. So similar way I'm trying to means uh, for my job perspective I have to learn go in the for the web development. So I was trying. Uh, I'm trying for that because I have to complete it uh, next ten days. I have to ramp up and then we will have migration and all those things. So. This is the personal project, so I'm not sure how much time I will be taking because I'm not even 10% familiar with the system level programming. So it's more of a research based also. So definitely, once I complete it, I will definitely put up a, a full talk with this. Hey, Ankur, great work, man. Uh, we should definitely schedule one more uh, meeting with you sometime later and uh, you know you you could probably decide when you made some more progress and uh, we can have uh, you sharing all your learning once again this, this is very nice yeah sure uh, and uh, just a thing can i uh, ask you guys for a feedback yes please yeah so okay so this is where I'm trying, I'm putting all whatever I'm learning. So over means for my HTTP means Golang packages, whatever my thoughts and learnings are. So if you guys get any time means any time you can share that uh, feedback to me that uh, this is where you are wrong from here. And this is where, so suppose for net HTTP package. So what uh, it's basically of a notes like uh, what is handler and what it does and then what uh, docs is basically notes for me docs is and like why it poses default uh, http package poses a security risk because it's a global variable and then what types and their message and then how uh, what is the difference between handler func and everything uh, multiplexer and how it works and how do registration happens and server marks and all those things and how to match the handler for a given pattern means once request comes in how to actually what are the function calls and uh, so if you guys get any time i would really like to have you uh, give me feedback on these things because i i have 10 days and i really need to ramp up cool all right isn't this something that you're going to present uh... Uh, in yeah, today, today? Okay. yeah, I'm going to present yeah. it today, but uh, I okay. don't know. I want feedback from you guys. That's why I told means uh, I will present. They will uh, say that, uh, okay, means whatever I'm saying means whatever my understanding is, if there is something wrong, they can provide me the feedback at the same time. But suppose for the context package, uh, context uh, today, uh, Dennis, I think talked about this. Uh, so uh, from so for me to understand this it took me a time what is the use of it so basically what i understood from it is uh, from the uh, channel perspective 
లైక్ హౌ డు యూ కంట్రోల్ డిఫరెంట్ గో రూటీన్ మీన్స్ గో రూటీన్స్ ఆర్ సెపరేట్లీ ఎగ్జిక్యూటింగ్ ఇంటిటీస్ రైట్ సో how do you control means way to control these things so we have channel way or means this is the way i thought of it means global variable and context of a go routine then with so these are the things i want you guys to help me out if i am wrong at any place to speed so if you don't have any time or if you guys don't mind helping me out in learning i mean just to um, if if you're familiar with node js and um, programming yeah you would have come across promises right um, yeah with node js you start any of the um, asynchronously running task no promise yeah. and then you can manage its execution you can cancel promises you can change promises one after the other and all that you so, cannot um, cancel promise well you can call cancel on it that does not do anything that's a different matter but it does have the cancel api uh native nodes uh, promise api you are talking about no uh on side because as far as i am aware there is no uh, such uh, api for promise Give me a minute. So I'm talking about Bluebird Promise actually. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit outdated on that uh, front. So context is that same, um, provides a similar way of managing those uh, context, uh, go routines. Right? You can find them out, you can um, cancel them like um, a running uh, go routine can be cancelled using the context yeah that i have understood means basic perspective i have understood like you can see multiple go routine i am creating so i am just spawning here go routine and that is sleeping and then whenever can, i am calling after some second it's uh, getting cancelled or if from here also i can means this is basically to so if i can cancel the inner also or not these are the things i have understood what i want to know is means just uh, help me out in the direction where i can learn more about it sure a good um, i think we can um Hey, uh, I had uh, this one more tip for you, Ankur. Uh, so, on the discussion that we were having on the chat, I mean, you actually don't have to implement uh, your stuff for each OS. What I was trying to tell you is that there is a facility where you can have a file underscore OS dot go. And what this does is that uh, when, when you have a file like this, uh, I mean, this file could be any file of yours, uh, but when you give an underscore and give the OS name, after it uh, the go tools are only going to include that file for that particular os so so if you had uh, something underscore linux dot go then when you run when you build your uh, package on linux that's when it gets included so you can use that as a parameter to decide uh, the behavior for non linux os so you you could you could uh, you could put your uh, iocetl uh, constants into the underscore linux uh, file Uh, and okay. then you, and uh, for non linux builds you can say uh, no this os is not supported and you know bail out okay uh, yeah sure uh, means i will try to means uh, that is the, i will try this uh, means this weekend to make all my raw enable raw functions in a, uh, all those functionality into a separate file for linux and uh, yeah Cool, Ankur. Uh, thank you so much. I think uh, regarding uh, the help, I think you can reach out to anyone uh, even later, and uh, they will definitely help you. Uh, it's nice to see the project. Definitely, anybody could help you and the focus community. Uh, post it in Slack channel. And for the rest of the folks, it was really nice to see uh, folks coming for the first meetup. Uh, and this meetup we will try to do uh, twice in a month. 
uh, mostly Thursdays, even if it changes, we'll update you. Uh, as a closing note, like for others, uh, there is a Google's uh, meetup, which is uh, actually a workshop, workshop for the whole day. Uh, it's happening on 2nd December 2018, uh, and it's happening in Gojek, and the link I will share it. Uh, please do spread the word to your friends and then others. It's actually a free workshop, so you can uh, join. Uh, like you, you can ask your friends to join. Uh, this is specially for the ones. And also we have a meetup on October 6th, uh, Bangalore meetup. And also Chennai, I think Gaurav can give the update. Uh, so there's already three talks lined up, so please you can join up. And then for the current meetup, remote meetup, uh, you guys can post your uh, proposals in the link which I'm going to share you, which is actually proposal uh, issues. Uh, th there is a nice um, template, so you can actually create it and then you guys can propose it off as well. So, and as a closing, we will uh, definitely thank you organizers. I think I can share the screen. Uh, just a second. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, please do check out all the meetups and then uh, share to your friends also. We'll uh, grow the community. And organizers, uh, like currently we are one of folks who is interested. And then Garo, as I said, like he is the Chennai meetup organizer when he was hosting the remote meetup a while back. And then this is me. Uh, I'm in Bangalore. And then Praveen, he really did an awesome job. He put up all the content in uh, Golang India, the study group, uh, the whole community guidelines and the proposal that plays. Uh, thanks again. And Dhriti, she is running the Golang uh, community in Bangalore uh, for a really long time. And we also will credit uh, Aaron because uh, uh, he is running Go Study Group. And then I think right after this, their study group is starting. So you guys can join if you want. And uh, so these links are, uh, there is also one more group community, which is actually called Athens. Uh, they are doing something around uh, setting up a proxy for Go Mods, uh, Go Modules. Almost you can imagine like a Ruby gems and their community is really growing and they can help anyone who wants to uh, open source contributions. Uh, so you can join that also. So which is going to happen after the Go study group, uh, right after that, the applicants meet will happen. So I will share the links. Um, and if you have any questions or anything else, you can catch up. If not, we can definitely catch up in the Golang uh, GoPurs channel. So yeah, this is the one link and other ones. So that's it. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. And if you have anything informal, uh, we can uh, uh, talk. If not, we are obviously done. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Thanks, Anish. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everyone. See ya. Bye bye.